Hey, John here from John Stewart Yourself. You've probably landed on this video because you own an X-Carve, you've attached a laser to it, and now you wanna use the rotary tool from X-Tool, the RA2, with your laser and X-Carve. So, real quick, I'm gonna show you a simple modification that will allow you to do that. Let's get cutting. When you take your RA2 out of the box, you will find connection wires. There is a two foot long connection wire and there is also two small adapters tied to it. The white end connection wire is for the X-Tool D1. The black end wire is an extra for other lasers. We will be using the black ended one. When you look at your Y2 motor wire connector, you can see that it is an 11 pin straight connector. Straight meaning not stacked like a 6 over 6 with one blank. You can make this change without this step, but I wanted it to be easy to change back and forth between the RA2 and the X-Carve, and I was not about to make any modifications to my X-Carve. What I did was purchase this online. I simply look for an 11 pin Molex connector. Got this one on eBay for around $5. Now I know what you're thinking, rewiring my X-Carve? No, just modifying the adapter that comes with the RA2 so I can plug it into my X-Carve. Okay, so you don't screw this up and unpin the wrong end, go grab your RA2 and plug the adapter into the connection wire. The next step is to unpin the connector from the cap. There are small pieces of plastic that hold the pins in place. Using a sewing pin or a small brad, pry up these pieces of plastic until the pins come free. I am using one of those small flathead eye glasses screwdrivers. All four pins come out pretty easily without much effort, unless you're blind like me and it takes a while. Facing your X-Carve on the left hand side is your Y1 axis motor. Unplug the connector from that motor first. Now take the bare connector wires at the end of the adapter and from the top down, flip the last two. Hold the Y2 plug. Ensure they align with the white bean on the top. It should look like this. Turn on your X-Carve and then fire up Lightburn or whatever software you're going to be using. Move your router forward and backwards. If you get a buzz from the motor, your connection is wrong. Flip the adapter over and start from the top down again, crossing the last two. If you get this right, your RA2 will turn in the direction of your arrows. Before you pull your pins out, grab some painter's tape and write down the corresponding numbers to the colors. One for W for white, two red, three green, four black. We are going to stick these on the wires so we don't lose track of them while inserting them into the Molex connector. Now, take the small pieces of tape you just cut up and attach them to the wires before you pull each one of them out corresponding to their numbers and their colors. Now for me, my Molex connector came with pins that were a fraction of a bit longer than what I had on my adapter. And they were also too big for the X-Carve pinholes. So I needed to use the same pin heads on the connector without removing them. In order for me to do this, I just needed to shorten my Molex connector. I just took the insert to the bandsaw and shaved off a bit of the end so the pins would fit all the way through. And this worked like a charm. Okay, on your Molex, make sure the clip side is down. Then from the top, insert your number one into the first pinhole, the number two or the red into the fifth pinhole, the green or the third goes into the seventh pinhole and the fourth wire or black wire goes into the 11th pinhole. These are corresponding to the pins receptacles on the X-Carve. Once complete, make sure all the pins are straight before you move on. I doubt these pins will come out, but for added protection, I put some electrical tape on the end of the Molex cap and sealed the wires in place. I also cleaned up a, t a little bit of the tape, but that wasn't really needed. Now, all you have to do is go over to your X-Carve and check your connection. Everything looks good. 
Now I don't have to guess where my wires go each time I simply plug and play with my new connector. That's it, you're good to go. But I know a few of you have been thinking, what kind of clearance is this gonna have? And I thought about that too, and then it's a pretty simple fix. Really easy if you have a seven watt laser where your laser's not that long. But if you have a 14 watt like me, this laser is pretty long. And a simple tooling of the bracket will give you the clearance you need even for those large tumblers. Let me show you how quick I did this. So I took a straight edge and I laid it on the waste board. Then I took the bracket and I drew a straight line across it. I would guess that it was a little over a quarter of an inch in width from the top of the bracket. Then using the pre-drilled holes above, I aligned them and made cross hatches on the lines I just drew. Using the pre-drilled holes, find out what size drill bit you need and drill out your registration marks. Now you can reattach your bracket and in the process, use the settings that allow the bracket to be at its highest point. Now you can reattach your laser and check your clearances. Even using the step jaws instead of the rollers, you can see that there is still at least an inch and a half clearance over the large tumbler. So real quick, I just stuck a glass on the jaws of the chuck to see it in action. No measurements were taken here to make this perfect. I just wanted to see that it did not burn upside down or inside out, which I have heard is a big problem with using this tool with the D1X tool laser. As expected, my 14 watt JTEC laser on my X-Carve worked like a champ with this machine. Connecting and disconnecting this rotary tool is now a breeze. As always, thanks for watching, and if you're going to give this a try, hit that thumbs up button, and I would love to hear your comments below.